Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Baptist Church. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. Let's all stand together. When we all get to heaven, we'll sing and shout the victory. Sing it out nice and strong. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. singing this morning and it's good to see you this morning I want to welcome you to First Baptist Church I also want to welcome those who are joining us via live stream as well and of course our prayer today is that the service will be an encouragement and a blessing to you uh, both here and uh, wherever you may be watching uh, but also that we would just worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and so I hope this morning you've come uh, with a prepared heart to receive from him and to give back to him as well and so let's pray this morning and ask the Lord's blessing on our service today. Father, we do thank you that we can come this morning and, uh, Lord, just to make time to be in your house to worship you. And, uh, Lord, as we sing praises and, uh, Lord, even we think, think of that song, what a day that will be. And, Father, we ask that you would just, uh, Lord, just prepare our hearts for the service today. And, uh, Lord, that you would just use the singing, uh, Lord, to, to honor you, and that you would be magnified through it. Lord, even our giving as we honor you and give back as you have blessed us, uh, Lord, so that your ministry and the kingdom of heaven can be, uh, Lord, just move forward. And Father, I pray that you would just continue to bless even through the preaching, uh, Lord, time that, uh, Lord, we would just uh, draw our hearts to your word, you would speak to our hearts through it, and Lord, that we would just have that desire to serve you more, uh, Lord, and love you. And so we just thank you for the privilege that we have to come and worship this morning. We ask your blessings on each aspect of the service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning, and the choir is going to sing for us.
serve a wonderful God. Amen. Let's all stand together. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. faithfulness, O oh God, my Father.
a great song. What a great message. I'm so thankful for his faithfulness. Amen. Well, let me just give you a couple of announcements here, um, just uh, some reminders, just really two, and then we'll have our ushers come and take up our offering. Uh, of course, don't forget, today is the, the last day to be able to register for the ladies' luncheon, and uh, that is, of course, next Saturday or this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, and so encouraging all the ladies to be able to come for that. And we have a, a special guest speaker for the ladies that day. And so uh, if you haven't uh, registered for that, you can go right to the, the church website. And uh, there's a link right on there. You can register uh, for the ladies' luncheon. Invite someone to come with you. There'll be a great time of fellowship there for the ladies. And uh, so just wanted to make sure you remember that. Uh, that's, today is the last day for that. And then, of course, uh, also... Um, in June is when we have our kids go to junior camp, our juniors, and they go to Hoosier Hills Baptist Camp down in Dillsboro, Indiana. And uh, it's a great camp. They do a great job with our, our, our kids, and uh, our kids love going there. Uh, but every year they have a work day where they invite folks to come in that would like to maybe help do some repair work and things like that at the camp. And uh, the, the week of, that they're doing this is May the 10th through the 14th, so not tomorrow Monday, but next Monday on the 10th, uh, that week they're going to be doing some repair work and things uh, on the camp. And uh, just all different kinds of stuff, uh, some of it's carpentry, some of it's electrical, some of it's uh, you know, just mudding, uh, drywall, things like that, and just trying to uh, make the camp better and better each year. So if you're interested in helping, you say, well, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't know if I could lead a project or anything like that. They're not asking you to lead a project, uh, but if you'd be interested in going down there for a day, you don't have to go down there for the whole week, but if you'd go down there for a day or maybe two days, if you want to go down in two days or something like that, um, they do provide lodging if you'd like to stay there the night. Uh, they have lodging there, and they provide food for those that go down and help as well. And so if you're interested in doing that, and again, it could be one day or it could be all five days if you're interested in that. Um, if you could see myself or Brother Greg Euler uh, after the service and let us know that you're interested in that, and then that way we can kind of let them know that we might be having a couple that might be coming from the church or something, uh, and that way they know how to prepare and stuff. But uh, they're going to be putting some doors in, setting some doors and stuff, uh, putting some uh, flooring down, doing some drywall, finishing up some bathrooms, uh, doing some roof work and things like that. So just all kinds of different stuff. Uh, and so if you're interested in going down there and being a, a help to the camp and being a blessing to them, uh, let myself know, or I said Brother Greg, and, uh, and we'll give you some more information on that. Or if you just want more information, you say, I'm not sure, can I get more information? Let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, I think the Stensis girls are going to sing uh, this morning, and we'll have our ushers come at this time. And... Uh, uh, we'll get ready to take up the offering, uh, but also want to make mention of one other thing. On the last Saturday of this month, we are doing what we're calling a citywide blitz, and uh, what we're wanting to do is from 10 o'clock to noon, and we'd like to have as many people as we can from the church come out and help us with this. Obviously, last year with, with COVID and things, we weren't able to do a lot of uh, visiting and, and trying to invite people to come to church, and so uh, we're going to try to get that started back up, and so on the 29th of May, the last Saturday of May, uh, we want to try to get as many folks to come from the church as possible, and we're going to go out and try to put invites and tracks on thousands of homes here in Eaton, and, uh, and so we'll be doing that for the full two hours, just trying to go out. We'll have maps and things ready uh, for people to go, uh, but come out and help us with that, and obviously we're praying for, for good weather for that day, uh, but just come out and help us with that, and uh, we'll... we'll put you with somebody that uh, knows what they're doing. And really, you, you don't have to know a whole lot. It, you're just taking a, uh, an invite and just putting it on their door. I'm telling you, that's, that's difficult right there, right? And so uh, you got you to know about three quarters of the Bible to be able to do that. You know? so, no, it's, it's very easy to do. So come out and help us with that. And we'd love to have you. We'll have a great time there just inviting folks to church and trying to get the gospel out. And uh, so be in prayer about that and come, uh, come join us that day. Uh, Brother Rob Wagenseller, would you come this morning and uh, bless our offering uh, as we take up and give back to the Lord this morning. Our right, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day. You've given the opportunity to be in your house. We pray, Lord, for the service this morning. We pray your hand be upon Brother uh, Pastor Andrew as he brings the message to us. We pray, Lord, we listen with open hearts. We pray, Lord, this, uh, this morning for our country. We pray, Lord, for those we elected in the office. We pray you give them the right decisions to make. We pray for our military, protecting our freedoms throughout the world. We pray you watch over them. 
We pray for our missionaries preaching your word this day. We pray you watch over their families, their needs be met. And we pray, Lord, for the offering this morning. We pray to go and further the cause of Jesus. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a stream of precious mercy meant for lost and desperate souls. Long I heard of its existence, how it made the broken whole. Though my sins might be a scarlet, they'd be white beneath the flood. And though I don't understand it, I sing a you'd come to bear my cross. Lord, I tremble when I think of what I gained and what you lost. Who am I to come so boldly while you hold me with your love? Though I still don't understand it, I sing Let's take our Bibles, open to the book of Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, and um, Colossians chapter 2, you're going to think that I planned that song for the message this morning. I did not, but it's, uh, wow, it's just going to go right in with the message this morning. Colossians chapter 2, as we're continuing our study through the book of Colossians and just, uh, again, looking at the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. Uh, man, what a powerful, uh, powerful thoughts those are, that, that Christ is enough. Amen? Amen? Uh, he is sufficient, uh, and He is supreme. And uh, those are just wonderful thoughts that we find here in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, and we'll begin reading in verse number 6 and 7, where actually these verses are where our theme for this year has come from, being rooted in Christ. And so uh, we're looking at these verses, and uh, in verse number 6 it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Father, we do ask that you would just bless the message now. Lord, we thank you for... Uh, Lord, just a beautiful song, and Lord, the message that Jesus saves. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, maybe there's somebody here this morning or somebody watching via live stream that may not know Christ as their Savior. And Father, I pray today you would speak to their heart. And Lord, for Christians, uh, Lord, you just draw us closer to yourself and that we would uh, realize that you are sufficient. And Lord, we can do that which you would have for us to do. And so Lord, bless the service now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Last week, we were uh, looking at how important it is that all of the church, everybody in the church, are growing in maturity. And we were looking at verse number uh, four and five uh, last week about this, and uh, that we need to be growing and standing against false doctrine. Uh, that's why we need to grow in maturity so that we can stand against false doctrine, not just in the church, but uh, outside as well, because uh, it's not just in the church where false doctrine is taught. Uh, obviously, if you listen to the news or if you listen to other any type of social media and things, you'll find there's a lot of false doctrine being taught uh, and people just putting God onto the end of things or saying, well, the Bible says, but yet it doesn't really say that and God never said it. And uh, so we need to grow to be able to stand against false doctrine, but also to stay strong in the battle. And we see that we're in a spiritual battle against the principalities of this world, against spiritual darkness in high places. And it's important that each of us as a church or as a part of the body of Christ to grow in maturity so that we can be able to stand strong in the battle. And, uh, you know, I believe if, if we... I know we kind of break this up into to sections and things like that because obviously you can't preach the whole book on one Sunday, but I really believe that uh, as Paul was writing this, he understood that there were going to be many who do not think they need to grow spiritually. Just like today, there are many who don't think that they need to grow in maturity. Uh, many Christians who are just going to leave that to the pastor. That's the pastor's job to be spiritually mature. That's the missionary's job. That's the deacon's job. And I think Paul realized this as well. It's not just the, the apostle Paul's job to grow in spiritual maturity. It's not just uh, Epaphras, who we believe was the pastor of the church here. It's not just his job to grow in spiritual maturity, but every believer needs to grow. And uh, I think Paul understood that there would be maybe even some pushback to that. And uh, we read here in verse number six, it says, As ye therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Paul understands and realized that there would be those who think that it's not important. And so this morning, I'd like to ask you just one question as kind of as a title to, to the message. And that is, whom do you believe him to be? Him, of course, referring to Jesus Christ. Whom do you believe him to be? When you got saved, whenever that was, maybe that was this year, uh, maybe that was last year, uh, maybe it was five years ago, maybe it was 15 years ago, Maybe it was 25 years ago. Maybe it was 50 years ago. Whenever you got saved, whenever you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, who did you receive? Who did you receive? Look what he says here in verse number 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. You see... Who we receive is very important because who we receive determines how we live. Who we receive determines how we live. And that's why we have to ask ourselves this question, whom do I say he is? Who do I say he is? It's very similar to the question that Jesus asked the disciples back in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 15 when he says, whom do men say that I am? And they say, well, some say that you're Jeremiah and some say that you're Elias or one of the other prophets. And Jesus asked them this question, but whom say ye that I am? It's one thing for everybody else to believe these things and believe that, oh, you're Jeremiah or you're Elijah or you're a prophet or something like that. But Jesus asked the disciples there, who do you believe me to be? Who do you believe him to be? Because who you believe him to be determines how you walk. 
Did you notice that? He says, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. In the way that you receive Jesus Christ, as ye therefore receive Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him. My walk in him is really determined on who I think him to be. And so this morning, as we think about this, and whom do you believe him to be? And, and really, I, I, I don't really even think we're going to be able to get into verse number 7, because this is really showing the how of the walk. But before we can get to the how of the walk, we have to determine who he is. Because if we're walking in him, who is the him that we're walking in? Because the him that we're walking him in is the one that we have received. You say, Pastor, that just sounds so simple. I wish it was. And so I have three questions for you this morning. My three points are simple questions. Number one, did you receive Christ? My second question this morning is going to be, did you receive Jesus? My third question this morning is going to be, did you receive Christ Jesus the Lord? Say, so aren't all those the same? Not necessarily. I want you to look with me this morning at this. Number one, did you receive Christ? There were many who were looking for the Christ. Many who were looking for the Messiah. Because when we understand what the word Christ means, the word Christ is not actually a name, it's a title means Messiah, the anointed one. But why were they looking for him? Why were they waiting for his coming? Why were they wanting the Messiah to come? Why were they wanting the deliverer? Why were they wanting the anointed one to come? Well, they thought, and we can go back in Scripture and we'll see some of these things, but they thought that the Christ was the answer to all their problems. If Messiah would come, then he would deliver them from the Romans. If Messiah would come, Israel would be great again. If Messiah would come, everyone would have food. If Messiah would come, Messiah would heal everyone. If Messiah would come, then there would be no problems. If Messiah would come, if the Deliverer would come, then we would be delivered out of all of these different things. The problem with that is Messiah was not come to bring physical deliverance. And there are many people who are saying, yes, I'm going to believe, I'm going to receive Messiah. I'm going to receive Christ, and their whole premise behind it is thinking that if I can receive Messiah, or if Messiah comes and I receive him, then all of my problems go away. And therefore, if that's who I'm receiving, then that's how I'm walking. If I'm receiving Messiah in that, well, if Messiah, I receive Messiah, if I receive Christ, then all of my problems go away, then the very problem is the very next time I have problems, what's going to happen? Well, what happened to Messiah? Why didn't Christ do this for me? Why didn't he deliver me from this problem? Why didn't he take this financial problem away? Why didn't he take this health problem away? Because I thought Messiah was supposed to deliver me from all my problems. I mean, you think about it. Israel wanted to deliver from Egypt. Deliver us. Messiah, deliver us. We need a deliverer. But yet, as soon as they were delivered from Egypt, what did they do? They wished they were back in Egypt. Why? Because life got hard. Oh, we want to deliver. We want to get out of Egypt. We want that promised land. We want everything about the promised land because the promised land is supposed to be perfect. The promised land is supposed to be so good. 
This was promised to us, and we want this, and so we want Messiah to deliver us. And so God delivers them, and they're all excited. They're gung-ho. They're like, hey, let's get out of here. But as soon as they make it to the wilderness, as soon as the first problems come, what do they say? Would to God we had just died in Egypt. Would to God we were back in Egypt. You know, there are many people claiming to be Christians who have simply received Christ. They have received him thinking that Christ is just going to take away all my problems. I mean, he's the deliverer. He's the anointed one. And they have that same idea. If you accept Christ, then you won't have any more problems. You'll have a good job. No, no, you're not, not a, you'll have a great job. If you accept Christ, your, your financial problems, man, you know, they're all just going to go. If, if you accept Christ, man, your, your health issues, they're, they're all going to, I mean, because he's the, the great physician and he wants everybody to be healed, so he's going he's gonna to heal everyone. If, if you accept Christ, then, man, you're, 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 you're going to be driving, you know, all kinds of vehicles and all these things because God, he wants everybody to be prosperous. And there are many, many that receive Christ simply as an answer to all of my physical problems. There might be someone today. You said, I received Christ, but that's exactly why I did it. I received Christ because I thought, man, all my problems would go away. I received Christ because I thought, man, life would be a bed of roses from now on. And then when we get to the very first problem that we encounter after that, we begin to wonder, wait a minute, what happened? I thought I received Christ. I thought all my problems were supposed to go away. I received Christ. I'm supposed to have money in the bank to be able to take vacations. I've received Christ. I'm supposed to get that promotion at work. I've received Christ. All my kids are supposed to be angels. <laughs> I've received Christ. No one's going to get sick. I've received Christ. All, everything's just going to be okay. You see, all they were looking for is a deliverer from the problems of life. And if you really think about it, that's what's going to happen when you just accept Christ. I'm accepting Christ to answer all of my problems. If you think about it, that's, if you think that's what's going to happen, you ought to ask Paul what's going on in his life as he's writing this <laughs> letter. He's in jail. Now, why, why would Paul say, hey, if you just receive Christ, all your problems are going to go away, but I'm sitting here writing from jail. No, see, Christ is not just an answer to all of the physical problems and things that we have in life. And this is why whom you believe him to be determines how we walk in him. Because if I look at him and just say he's an answer to all of my problems, and so I receive him, but yet he doesn't fix all of my problems, guess what's going to happen? I'm not going to walk in him. I'm not going to walk in him because he's not matching up what I thought he was supposed to be. Did you receive Christ? Number two, did you receive Jesus? You see, there are those who are just looking for a good example to follow. What did they say? Some say thou art Jeremiah and Elias. And what are the prophets? What were they saying? They're just saying Jesus was a good man. Jesus was a good man. He's a good example to follow. And there are many today who are looking for a good example to follow. I mean, after all, who doesn't want to better their lives? I think we would all say, hey, I want to better my life. And if, if following the example of Jesus could better my life, I'll be willing to accept Jesus. I'll receive Jesus. If following Jesus means that I can, I can better my life in some way, then I'll do that. If following Jesus means I'll get rid of some bad habits, I'll do that. If following Jesus means, hey, you know, some things kind of work out in my life, I'll do that. 
I'll follow Jesus. I'll receive Jesus. I mean, Jesus taught to be kind to your neighbor. Who wouldn't want to do that? You say, you don't know my neighbor, Pastor. Well, <laughs> Jesus taught that we were to give to the poor. Jesus taught that we were to help others. Jesus helped people. And so many times we look at Jesus simply as a role model, a good role model, and say, hey, yeah, if that's, if that's what it means to follow Jesus and I can follow this role model, then, hey, yeah, I'll receive Jesus. I mean, look at the example that he lived. I mean, he, man, he, he, he honored his parents and, and he honored authority and he did all of these good things. I'll do that. I, I'll, I'll receive Jesus if, if I can have that role model to follow. But see, the thing is, Jesus didn't come just to be a good role model. Many think that if they just follow his example and do some of the things that he did, then they'll get to heaven. And I'm truly afraid that these are the two things, if you want to call it things, that many people are basing their salvation on. I received Christ because I was in a bad shape and I wanted everything to be better. I received Jesus because, you know, hey, I mean, he, he was a good role model. I mean, there's a lot of good things said about him in the Bible and, and lots of people followed him and things. But the problem is, if I just receive Jesus as a good role model, then that's how I'm going to walk. I'm just going to walk trying to live my life according to what Jesus did, what Jesus said. And that's the way many people are living today. If I can just go to church, and if I can just be religious, and if I can just do all these different things, and if I can just follow his example, then maybe that will get me in. But Paul says here, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord. Think about what Paul is saying here. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord. This is very different from just receiving Christ. This is very different from the, just receiving Jesus. This is receiving Christ Jesus, the Lord. Let me ask you, who, if you have accepted, and, and I, if you're here this morning and if you've just received Jesus or if you've just received Christ and, and hoping and thinking that all your problems and you've got a good role model to follow, let me tell you something this morning, that's not salvation. You say, well, I received Jesus and I said a prayer and, and I received Christ, but friend, can I tell you something? A prayer does not save you. If a prayer saved you, then we would just have one place in Scripture where it says, say this prayer and you will get saved. But a prayer doesn't save. The Bible says that comes from our heart. And that's why Paul says here, as ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Whom you believe him to be determines how you walk in him and how you live your life. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then let me ask you, who forced you to accept Christ? You say, well, no one did. I, I mean, that was a decision I made. I think we would all agree with that, right? No one forced us. You had to make that choice on your own. It was a personal decision that you made based off of who you believe Jesus to be, right? Is that what we had to do? We, we, we look at Scripture and we believe that Jesus is the only one who can save us from our sins. It's not just saving us from physical problems like Israel was looking for, but it is a spiritual salvation, saving us from our sin, saving us from the judgment of God. And we, we recognize that Jesus Christ is the only one who can save us. And so we understand who he is. We believe what the Scripture says. And based upon who we believe him to be, we make that choice to personally accept Christ as our Savior and put our faith in Him. 
Amen? Right? And this is what Jesus was asking the disciples in Matthew chapter 16. Whom do ye say that I am? Who do you believe me to be? Yes, I know all of these other people are saying we believe him to be Jeremiah or Elijah or one of the prophets or whatever. But Jesus says, listen, fellas, disciples, who do you believe me to be? Now, why is he asking that question? Because who they believe him to be is going to determine the rest of their life. It's going to determine how they live. If they just believe that Jesus is a good role model to follow in, in a short time, they're not going to have a role model to follow and they're going to go away. If they just believe that, that Christ, this Messiah, the Deliverer, is there to deliver them from their problems, then as soon as they start following him and these problems come, guess what's going to happen? They're going to go away. That's why when you read John chapter 6, the Bible says from that day, not this day, but in John chapter 6, it says as Jesus was teaching from that day, many of his disciples followed him no more. Why? It wasn't quite the, the Jesus that they wanted. It wasn't quite the Christ that they wanted. Not the Messiah that we were looking for. We're looking for a Messiah to deliver us from Roman bondage. We're looking for a Messiah that's going to make Israel great again. We're looking for a Messiah that's going to, you know, bring back all of the prosperity to Israel. We're looking for that kind of Messiah, but you're offering this spiritual salvation thing that you're talking about, and that's, that's not what we're looking for. And Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Peter's response was what? Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. He said, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You're the Deliverer. You're the Son of God. Not just to save us from the physical here, but the spiritual. To save us. And in the same way, as we think about this, he says, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. In the same way that no one can force us to walk in him or to live like him, to conduct ourselves in the same way that he did. No one can force us to do that. You have to make that choice on your own. It is a personal decision that is going to be made based off of who you believe Jesus Christ to be. You see, the way that we live our life simply demonstrates who we believe him to be. How we live simply shows how we or who we believe him to be. It's interesting, over 200 times in the New Testament, Jesus' full name or if you want to call it name or title, is used either as Christ Jesus the Lord or the Lord Jesus Christ. Over 200 times that name is used that way. Christ Jesus the Lord. Jesus Christ the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. Paul uses the, the full name of Jesus, if you want to call it that. He doesn't just say, as you have received Jesus or as you have received Christ, but he says, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord. He uses all three why? Because he's showing us who he believes him to be. Christ, simply the title, it means Messiah, anointed one. Jesus was his name, the name that was given to him at birth. But the Lord, Christ Jesus the Lord, shows us what position he is to have in our life. The word Lord it means owner. It means ruler. It means Master. Do you really believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord? Have we truly received Christ Jesus the Lord, or have we just received a Christ or Jesus? Because he says, as ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Do we really believe that Jesus Christ, the Lord, 
Do we really believe that He is our master? That He is our owner? That He is our ruler? Because if we do, it will be evident and demonstrated in how we walk in Him and live our life. Ooh. It's easy to say, well, I've received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Well, can I ask, does your life testify to that? Does how you walk, how you live, testify to the fact that you have received Christ Jesus the Lord? Or does your life simply testify that you've received Jesus? You've just received a good role model. You've received Christ. You've just received someone that will help you get out of all your problems. But Paul says, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord. When we accepted Christ Jesus, the Lord, we accepted Jesus, the man who lived a perfect life for 33 and a half years, the the Messiah, the Christ, the Deliverer, who died on the cross to pay for our sin and was buried and three days later rose from the grave to save us from our sin, to save you from the judgment of God because of your sin. And you accepted Him as Lord, Master, Owner. In fact, in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So this is what Paul is saying. If you, or if that's who you really believe him to be, Christ Jesus the Lord, you really say, yes, I, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I understood that there was no other way I could be saved. I understood that, that he is not just a man. He's not just a role model to follow. He's, he's not just somebody that's going to get me out of my problems. This is, uh, you know, this is the, the, the one I have chosen to, to accept as my Savior. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day to be able to give me life. And, and it's not just about you know, everything being good here but we're talking eternity and and I have eternal life in Jesus Christ and and he is my Lord, he is my master, he is my owner, he is the ruler of my life. If that's who you truly believe him to be. And Paul says, walk in him. Walk in him. Live like Him. Conduct yourself like Him. Speak like Him. Act like Him. Live like Him. Now please understand, when I say this, I'm referring to myself as well. But far too many Christians are saying, I've received Jesus Christ, not I've received Jesus Christ the Lord. We want a get out of hell free card. We want to be able to say, hey, I've, I've received Jesus Christ, so I've, I've got eternity settled, right? I got that one. I know where I'm going when I die. And yes, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to live a little bit like what Jesus said. You know, I'm going to try to be kind a little bit, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to help my neighbor, and I'll give to the church, and I'll, I'll do some things like this. But Christ Jesus the Lord, that I, he's going to have to be the ruler of my life, the master of my life, the owner of my life. Uh, you, you don't understand, God. I mean, I've, I've got some great plans. God, you, you don't understand. You know, I, I, think, I think I could be better suited for this. God, you, you, you just don't understand. I'm just not that type of person. You know, I, I know you're wanting me to do that, but that's just, that's just not me. 
So it was just Christ Jesus then. You were just looking for a role model. You were just looking for somebody to get you out of trouble. And so many times, that's how we live our life. Instead of living for Christ Jesus, the Lord, the master of my life, the ruler of my life, the one who can say, hey, I want you to leave here and go over here and do this. And we say, yes, Lord. Not making excuses, not trying to say, well, but Lord, you don't understand. If I do that, this is going to affect this over here. And, you know, I've been really working for retirement and my 401k and, and my kids are in this school and, and all of this is going to, if I, if I do that, God, if I really move, that's going to just affect all kinds of different problems. So maybe I should just stay here and, and finish out what I'm doing. And then maybe in a few years, then maybe I can, I can get to that. Is that okay? Good. Thank you, Lord. Wait a minute, I thought he was Christ Jesus the Lord. Why was Paul sitting in a Roman jail writing this letter? Because he received Christ Jesus the Lord and was walking in him. You see, we want to receive Christ Jesus so that our life is easy and so that everything works out okay and we can just go on living our life the way we want to live it. We can't walk in him if that's how we're going to live. He says, as ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. If we really believe him to be all that we say he is, Paul says, walk in him. Live like him. Conduct yourself in the same way he did. And what a difference our lives would be if we would live what we say we believe. What a difference it would be. If that is who he is, and that is the position that we accept him in. And we say, yes, I believe that he is Christ Jesus the Lord. Then the question is, why isn't he Lord? Jesus said in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 46, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Why do Christians struggle being obedient to God and what He wants for their life? Because He's not the Lord. Why do, why do we say, well, hey, I can, do, I can have time for all of these other things? I can have time for my job, and I can have time for vacation, and I can have time for this, and I can have time for my hobbies, and I can have time for my family, and I can have time for all those things. And please understand, none of those things are wrong. But yet we don't have time for God. I got time for all these things, but to come out and invite somebody to church, I just don't have time for that. I've got time for all these other things, but to talk to my coworker about Jesus and tell him what Jesus has done to me and, and how he's changed my life, I just, you know, that's just not me. As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. If he is truly Christ Jesus the Lord, it should not be a problem to walk in him. The problem comes, well, you know, he's Jesus. He's a good role model. I'll do a lot of these good things and, you know, that, that will be enough. He's Christ. Yeah, I know he's a deliverer. And, and I, I'm glad that he saved me from my sins. And I'm glad I've got my, I'm glad I've got everything settled for eternity. Whew, I'm going to be in heaven. Ha, <laughs> got that. Christ Jesus the Lord? Hmm.
and we remain Lord. We tell God, this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do. Instead of allowing the one who gave himself for us to be the Lord of our life. Jesus Christ should be the focus of everything that we do. How we live our life should be focused around Jesus Christ. What we say and what we do and how we respond and our conduct, everything should be about Him because He is Jesus Christ, the Lord. We say, yes, I believe that Jesus is the only way. He's the only one who can save me from my sins, and so I repent of my sin and put my faith and trust in in Jesus and what He did on the cross. But are we walking in him? Are we allowing him to truly be Jesus Christ, the Lord? I wonder whether heads bowed and her eyes closed this morning. No one looking about. Over 200 times, Christ Jesus, the Lord. Jesus Christ, the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. Whom do you believe him to be? Who did you receive? Did you just receive Jesus Christ so that you could have a free pass to heaven? Did you receive Jesus Christ so you could just Have your problems taken away? Did you receive Jesus Christ just so that you could have a good role model to follow and be religious a little bit and do some of the things that we find in the Bible? Or when we receive Jesus Christ, did we understand and truly recognize that He is to be Christ Jesus the Lord? My life no longer belongs to me. It belongs to Him. My life should be lived in a way that He wants me to live. Maybe there's someone here this morning or watching via live stream and you say, Pastor, I have never accepted Christ Jesus, the Lord. Oh, I've, I've prayed a prayer and I've been religious and I've gone to church, but it's never been truly about accepting Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Friend, Jesus Christ is not just to be a good role model. He didn't come just to save you from some physical problems. He came to save you from your sin, to save you from the judgment of God, to give you a home in heaven for all of eternity to be with Him, and to be the Lord of your life, the master, the owner, the ruler. And so often as Christians, we do not allow Him to be that. Is He truly, do you truly believe Him to be Christ Jesus the Lord? If so, and Paul says very simply, walk ye in Him. Because how we live simply shows what we believe. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would truly help us to understand who you are. Lord, you're not just a deliverer to deliver us from some problems that we have. You're not just a good role model to follow and a good man. You are Christ Jesus the Lord. came to save us from our sins. To give us that hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Lord, to be truly the Lord of our life. Father, I pray for Christians this morning. Lord, I know in my own personal life many times 
I do not live letting you be the Lord of my life. Lord, I pray for Christians that you'd help us to live and to walk in you as we have received Christ Jesus the Lord. Lord, if there's someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord, it's not just about a prayer. It's not just about doing good things. It's not just about being in church. Lord, about repenting of their sin, recognizing that you are the only one who can save them from the judgment of God upon their sin, and that you truly want to be their Savior and Lord. Father, would you help us in this? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand quietly to our feet this morning with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. The piano is just going to play softly. This morning, maybe God has spoken to your heart about something. Maybe you've not been walking in Him. He's not truly been Lord in your life. He says, I I truly believe Him to be Christ Jesus the Lord. Then Paul says, walk in Him. Let Him be the Lord. Let Him be the master, the owner of your life. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've been in church, maybe you've been baptized, you've been religious, but there's never been a time when you've personally accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Friend, we'd be very happy to take the Word of God and show you how you can be saved. you can have Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of your life. It's the greatest decision you can ever make in your life. Are we living what we believe? Are we just living what we say? we believe maybe there's something in your life that God's saying I want you to let that go I want you to put that aside are you going to be obedient will you allow him to be Lord Whom do you believe that he is? Amen. God bless you for being here today. You may be seated. And again, want to encourage you to be back tonight, 6 o'clock, for our evening service. And uh, continuing our study through what we call the Baptist distinctives and uh, learning why we're Baptist and what we believe. And so I encourage you to be back tonight at, at 6. Brother Jay uh, Nichols will be preaching tonight. Uh, but I believe we have an announcement video, and so we'll go ahead and show that before we're dismissed this morning. We are so glad you were able to join us this morning, and we pray you were blessed by the singing and the message you heard today. Before you leave, there are a few events at FBC that we want you to know about. Ladies, make plans for the Ladies Spring event this Saturday on May the 8th. There will be a special catered luncheon at 11 a.m., followed by fun games and great teaching just for ladies. The cost is $8, and today is the last day to register for the luncheon. To register, Go to the main page on the FBC website and click on the registration button. We enjoy being able to take our teens to events that help them to grow in the Lord and meet other teenagers who are doing the same. One of these events is the 412 Rally. The 412 Rally is a quarterly gathering of youth groups from across the state that gather around the theme of the gospel and spiritual growth. This rally will be on May the 15th and our group will be leaving the church at 845 and returning around 3 p.m. Please speak to Jake and Leanna Nows if you have any questions or if you'd like your teens to attend as well. 
Our young adults class will be enjoying dinner, boating on Lake Lochengrin, and roasting s'mores at the Conley's home on Saturday, May the 22nd, beginning at 5 p.m. If you're a young adult, we'd love to have you come and even bring a friend. If you'd like more information, please speak to Joel or Heidi McIntyre. On May 23rd at 6 p.m., we will be celebrating the graduation of four high school seniors, Eden Alsept, Eva Plank, Addison Stensis, and Cody Williams. After the service, there will be a reception in the Fellowship Hall, so we hope you'll join us as we celebrate this milestone in their lives. Lastly, we are excited to begin our local outreach program again. On May 29th, from 10 a.m. to noon, we will be placing invitations and tracks in as many homes as we can for two hours that Saturday morning. Come help us get the gospel out to our community during our citywide blitz. Again, we want to thank you so much for attending First Baptist Church. We pray that our services were a blessing and an encouragement to you. If this is your first visit with us, we are so glad you came and we look forward to connecting with you. If you received the connection card, you may fill it out and leave it with an usher before you leave. Don't forget to visit our church website and Facebook page to stay up to date on events taking place here at FBC. And thank you for coming. And we look forward to seeing you again at our next service. Amen. We do hope you'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock. And of course, I think choir practice at 5 as well. So uh, we'll stand together and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And just thank the Lord for what he's done for us uh, today. Uh, Brother Jay, would you dismiss us in prayer this morning, please?